Hello. Hello, Carrie, and hello, Ryan. Thank you for joining. Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Can you hear us, Mike? I don't know if you can hear me. I'm hoping you can. Um, let me see if it's on my end. It's quite possible. Let's see. With this new version of uh, Zoom, uh, it's hard to tell. Oh, it's a, so it's picking up the wrong mic. So that's issue number one. Let's try this one. Yep. Right, can you guys hear me better? Uh, we could hear you before OK, but that's uh, good as well. Let's try. Carrie, can you hear me? Uh oh, nope, wrong one. Let's try that one. Hello? Hi, Michael. Can you hear us? Yes, now I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, very good. I've not heard Carrie yet. Carrie, can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, let me see here. So, um, desktop. All right. Microphone is headset, speaker is headset. Okay, there we go. I think we are on track. All right. So, Carrie and Ryan, thank you for joining. Is it automatic? Oh my goodness, it's actually automatically checking you in. I had to do this. I had to do this manually last time. Now it's this is really good. Um, let's see here. Um, I am gonna share my screen, though the times are off. Let me see if I can edit that real quick. Michael, are you seeing anybody else logged in? Um, in the waiting room? Yes, Olivia. Olivia Davis. Oh, she okay. is joining. All right. She's still you, connecting to audio, so I am going to. Are you seeing anybody else? Oh, my wife. Here she comes. Hello, oh. Olivia. Thank you for joining. Hey, how are you guys? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Let's see if I can get everything. Let's yeah, roll. take your take your time. Um, I think we are on track in terms of timing. I unfortunately am running late. Um, I have been dealing with uh, some outages at work, so unfortunately, it has been just back to back stuff. We're actually actually now that now I'm looking at the time, we're running a little early, so it's supposed to be five twenty five. Um, as a start time. So we are running early, which is good. Then we've got about 30 minutes, which we're probably going to shorten, or 25 minutes for announcements. And then your presentation at six. And then we adjourn at 6.30 and everyone can have dinner, which is great. And so let's see if I can share this now. This is Tanya. I made it. Yay! Hi, honey. Hi, honey. All right, so let me share my screen. Share my screen. Sure. There we go. All right. Awesome. Let me keep an eye on our attendance. We wait for people to slowly make their way in. I am also going to put on um, some music. I must have done it with um, Firefox. Let's see, Firefox. Oop. Amazon Music Prime. Let's see, yeah. Amazon Music Prime. I was going to say, while we're waiting, I've not met uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie or Olivia before. This is Tanya. Maybe you all can tell me who you are, where you work. 
Um, yeah, this is my first, this is Olivia, um, my first uh, experience with Confluence. I think I started working with it maybe two weeks ago. I work um, for Alliance Partners. I'm a senior UX UI designer slash developer. So um, Alliance is just kind of new to Confluence. So we're just kind of working on some uh, business cases that we're building up and that sort of thing. And I'm pretty new to Alliance, so. <laughs> oh, great. Well, thank you for joining. Um, so you must have received this invitation from Bill. Yes, I did. Um, and oh. I'm glad that he sent a follow-up email because I happily accepted his meeting invite and did not realize that I actually had to register. So. Yes, unfortunately, it's the only way I get reimbursed. Uh, so just as an FYI, I do not work for Alassian despite the awesome swag I get from them. <laughs> Uh, they, that's how they pay us. They pay us with swag and that's about it. And, and that's quite fine with me. But um, we, um, uh, so the Alassian leaders, uh, the Alassian user group leaders anyway, uh, are not, uh, do not work for Alassian. Um, I believe in fact it's a rule that you can't work for Alassian in order to run the group. They really want it to be a grassroots from the users that run uh, that use Confluence and Jira and other Alassian products to run the groups. Uh, and so I think that's a good thing because a lot of the times it's, um, you know, it allows people to see that it's actually people that use Alassian, not just other people that work for Alassian, which I think is a, is a good sign. Um, so yeah, I, um, I have been using Jira and Confluence, gosh, I want to say five, maybe five, six years now, uh, did uh, Alassian administration for in my last job for about two, three years. And now, uh, now that I work for Capital One, I don't really do that all that much. Um, now it's more um, just being a regular user, uh, essentially a power user. Uh, I, in many, in, in some cases, will know more than the Jira administrators. And, and, and some of that is understandable just because you know, I, I had to do it on my own for a very long time. Um, so yeah, let's, um, what are we in the mood for today? I think we played oldies hits last time. Um, we can do. Well, I was going to say, honey, I'm actually, I want to hear from the other people. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's not do music then. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name is Carrie Borgert. I also work at Allianz Partners. Bill is actually, um, I'm a project manager there. Um, so I'm actually on Bill's team or oh great peers. we're teammates oh hey bill yes i'm here can you hear me yeah, yeah, yeah. we can hear you bill great so uh, uh you can keep going carrie oh sure um and so you know dealing with projects we've been using jira for a couple years now um confluence I think we're, we're just beginning to use it more, um, you know, as a repository for project documentation and, and whatnot. Um, I can't remember everything else. Is that about it for what you wanted to hear? Tanya? That's great. Yep. Okay. Sure. Yeah, definitely gives an idea of who's here. And I'm Tanya. I'm Mike's wife. I use Trello. <laughs> I actually am not really familiar with Confluence, but I'm excited to learn a little bit more about it from, is it, sorry, Jack? Ryan. Did I get your invite? It's Ryan. Ryan, I'm so sorry. It's yeah, okay. Just, like, trying to handle it. <laughs> You'll see it later. It'll be all good. Oh, good. So we should have a pretty good turnout today, Michael. Um, yeah, so far we've got nine people, including myself and my wife, which is um, good. I had like 10 people respond to my, um, I'd send them out a separate invite, put all the information in. I had like 10 or 11 people who accepted. It's a couple of tentatives. It was only one decline, but the other ones didn't get any response, so. So I'm, I'm looking at the list to see who's popping in, and I'm, um, and I'm checking against my list. Good. 
Excellent. Yeah, uh, I was just explaining, I think, to Carrie or somebody that the registration in, um, in Alassian, I think I've explained to you as well, Bill, is how Alassian um, will reimburse uh, me for, for various uh, expenses that I accrue. Uh, fortunately, ever since we've gone digital, the, those expenses are relatively low. It's about $15 a month to run Zoom. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been doing that. Uh, this is our second month now. Um, I do plan on talking a little bit later about future AUGs uh, or ACEs, I just say, um, so that uh, we can figure out whether if people are comfortable meeting, uh, so long as we uh, align with the various rules and uh, stuff like that that the that this, the governor has uh, put into place, um, I am willing to entertain some of those ideas. Um, I think July might be a bit rough because I know a lot of people tend to go on vacation, but then again, COVID, right? You know, some people. Uh, I know my wife and I this week were we were actually supposed to be in Cancun. And uh, now we are at home. We're trying to figure out what we want to do for the vacation that I have to take because of the various rules and policies that Capital One has in place. And so uh, if you have ideas, we're more than happy to, <laughs> to get them from you. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't think we have any more people, but we'll give it a few more minutes. Um, so those of you who just joined, uh, my wife is doing the, the great thing of asking people to do some introductions. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind just telling us, you know, who you work for, what you do, um, and, um, you know, which uh, Alassian products that you use. If you know, if you don't know, that's okay. You're more than welcome to stick around. Come on, Hi, people. My I know you're not shy. <laughs> my name's Kay Elliott, and I work for Alliance with Bill and Carrie using Confluence. Very cool. Hi, this is Jerry. I work with Kay, Bill, and Carrie as well um, using Confluence. Jera actually I'm uh, working on a project now um, oh. for Confluence. So very, very on point for me. Very cool. Well, it sounds like uh, it sounds like more uh, Confluence topics are going to be encouraged. So um, I, I actually have a couple of ideas for, uh, for Confluence, but we'll see where Ryan uh, takes, uh, takes us uh, here today. Um, I think I'm gonna try to truncate our time here because uh, I haven't had any more new people come in. Let's go ahead and give it another five minutes uh, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself, but you guys are more than welcome to chat. Yeah, let's let's give it a little bit more than five minutes because if they had um, the same issues where they did not register, where they ah, good call, they're going to have to go and register. Okay, well, uh, why don't and find we find a little this? button up at the Ten corner minutes. that says "Join Virtual Meeting Now." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we'll give people ten minutes. How about that? Yeah, that'll work. Here, I thought it was just me. I was gonna say, while we're here, anybody have any good ideas for safe Father's Day activities? <laughs> we're probably gonna to get together with Mike's parents. Something local, social, so. socially distant, yeah. I mean, it, it, these days, technically they've opened it up, so if it's your family pod and his, and your, and his folks' family pod, you're probably okay. Um, you know, social, uh, uh whatever it is six to ten feet and, and face mask if you need it but um uh you know as far as getting together i don't know that i would recommend a whole lot of restaurants at this point but that's <laughs> certainly an option yeah no kidding um well he likes to fish so that was one idea that we floated around he likes to play golf well, both outdoors yeah golf golf and fish are both a good ideas mainly because right they're outdoors but uh there's Separation for golf is pretty good, and most people are not fishing right next to one another. Um, so those are both play. really good ideas. Awesome. You just got to find a place. Like there going, are, uh, oh, go on. I was just going to say there are a couple of places in near the Richmond area that you can go fishing. There are some private um, lakes that you can go as well. Um, but the state, oh, that's great. state parks are all usually pretty good as, um, as far as finding stuff. I, there's... I think they're, they're planning a 
50,000 okay. man march or something downtown this weekend. So I probably will okay. stay away from anything downtown. Um, Not downtown Richmond. Right. But uh, it, 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 it depends. You might want to go for the, the uh, you know, the right. uh, cell or the uh, protest part of it uh, as it is. So you never know. Um, but if you are not into all those people, um, it might be a good idea to go sort of away from downtown. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, they live down in Virginia Beach. So uh, maybe we can find some kind of a lake in that direction or riverfront or something. There's a, um, there's a couple of nature walks in uh, Virginia Beach. Uh, Lawson Point, I think, is one. And then there's, well, I can't think of the other one off the top of my head. But it's like a two and a half, three mile walk. And it's and it's literally a nature walk and it's not crowded usually. That's a great idea. Nice. Yeah, I know um, Shenandoah National Park has been really nice. I've gone on quite a few hikes there recently. And then Sunday, actually, my cousin's husband, um, they're doing a birthday celebration for him and we're gonna float down the river at um, Robius Landing. So in Powhatan, probably not as many people and tubes are far away from each other. So uh, that's, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> are you going to start up in Scottsdale or an end at Robius Landing or what? Um, you know, I should probably figure that out. Um, <laughs> we'll see. So Karen, it's somewhere in the details. Um, yeah, I think we were doing, I think we planned it. It's going to be like six hours or so, wherever we're doing the start and stop. So Olivia, for fun on the weekends, I'm actually an EMT in Goochum County. Um, and so uh, pretty much every weekend we get a call of come, come get us. We're on the river. I'm also on the, the water rescue team. Uh, and oh, wow. so a lot of times we get these calls right around dark um, where somebody will have sent out a message that says, yeah, we thought it, it was going to be a lot faster than it was. So uh, definitely check the, um, there's a couple of river gauges that you can check to see. Uh, and okay. then they also include what the flow rate is. And that'll give you a rough idea of about how long, uh, if you're going to use your own tube, if you're going to use um, one of the companies, uh, Richmond Outfitters or one of the other groups, um, they usually will okay, tell cool. you about how long it'll take. Awesome. Yeah, I think my cousin, um, he's done this one before and he's like all about planning stuff. So that's great. <laughs> yeah. And we're starting at like 930 in the morning. Uh, which, you'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. And it doesn't move that fast. So there's plenty of spots yeah. to sort of get out, you know? Mm hmm all depends on what kind of rain's been happening up in the, the mountains, how fast it's going to rain, well, how, yep. how heavy, the, deep the water yep. be. There's supposed to be, what, heavy rain tonight, tomorrow? Well, that's what I'm just yeah. going to check. Yeah. But there was also supposed to be, like, really bad thunderstorms at 1 and 4 this afternoon, and I'm in Tuckahoe, and there's nothing, and there has been nothing except extreme heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the radar. Most of it went north of us. There's a little bit south of us. Okay. That's nice. But are, there's a line eh, coming up that may hit us soon, but it, it'll probably miss us on the south. I just want it to rain so that it'll cool it off some. <laughs> Maybe yeah. drop the humidity a little bit. Yeah, my husband's been taking his meetings outside, so, you know, a walking meeting or whatever. Mm -hmm. nice weather is helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that and the car, the second office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, just recently moved to a townhome and we have a yard for the first time. So oh, cool. I have a tiny dog and a cat and she's an inside cat. So we got her like a mesh tunnel and tent. So she gets to come and go as she pleases. We just kind of like set it inside the sliding door and she just kind of wanders in and out however she wants. So she has not been happy that she has not been able to do that because it's just been so awful that we can't leave the door open. So we have to compromise by carrying her outside and pointing out the birds to her so she can watch them. She's not, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> So I've seen a few other people sneak in here. Uh, Amable and Jed have popped in. Hi, Ben. Hi, Amable. How you doing? 
Good, how are you? Good. Hey, Dale. Hey, Jed. Is Ashley sitting next to you? Uh, <laughs> no, she's still walking. She's still working. Yeah, I think it's your fault. No, nah, it's not my fault. My stuff's done. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. So we'll give people just a few more moments and then go ahead and start, Ryan. Well, isn't that supposed to start till six o'clock anyway, right? Yep, that's right. Oh, yeah. So you have any more announcements, Michael? Uh, no, we were supposed yeah. to start at 6 or uh, 5.50. Um, that uh, is about 10 minutes from now. So I was thinking of truncating it down to, well, essentially now. Um, but I, I think uh, we're going to give people two more minutes because I think we said 10, eight, eight minutes ago. Uh, but yeah, okay. the presentation is going to start at 6. I don't have 10 minutes worth of announcements. OK. Uh, and so um so yeah i don't expect this to go very long uh, more than happy to to keep chatting with you guys i mean i do have a uh, i do have a call that i need to get on to uh that's actually going to be ongoing during this meeting but uh i've been told that it's okay for me to join late so um so yeah we will uh, so i'm more than happy to host you guys but uh i mean you don't i guess you're already home but you can't stay on the zoom line so <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm more than happy to, uh, uh, chat with you guys until, uh, until that point. Actually, I, I guess I could just leave it open if you guys keep on talking. It's up to you. Oh, yeah. Well, let's, let's do, wait till six o'clock to start the presentation because I know some of the people who have accepted, they'll probably pop in just before the presentation. Oh, okay. Um, well, why, don't, why don't I do this? Since so many people here are new, I'll talk about the Alassian uh, user group a bit. Oh, this is the propaganda section, people. This is the propaganda. That's right. That's right. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Michael So. I've uh, been, uh, uh, been doing Alassian stuff for like the last five, six some odd years. Some, no, less than that. Um, because my wife and I have been married for almost six years. It'll be six years this July. Happy anniversary, honey. Um, and I've uh, been using Jira Confluence for probably about three, four years. Uh, I used to administer it when I was at my old job uh, back in Northern Virginia. I uh, attended the Alaskan user group there and basically just realized that if you want to be, become a good uh, Alaskan user and understand like how it all works, best practices, coming to these groups is the best way to do that. Uh, and so Ryan and Bill, uh, along with my wife, have, I think, attended pretty much all of the ones that we've had so far. Uh, so this is the second virtual meeting that we've had. And, uh, and so uh, we're trying to keep it going. There used to be a group here in Richmond, but they disbanded uh, due to lack of attendance. I'm trying to prevent that. So if you have questions or if you would like to present, uh, please, please, please let me know. Um, we do have a few topics that we recorded in our last session uh, for possible future uh, stuff. And it seems like with the Confluence being the, uh, the focal point here, um, I think our next meetup can be, uh, can be uh, Confluence focused. Uh, so, um, so yeah, if you're interested in presenting, uh, please let me know. I usually present about once a quarter. I really try to limit how much I present. Uh, primarily because it can't be me. Um, uh, even though um, I'm fairly knowledgeable, there are definitely people that are more knowledgeable than me and I, I wanna learn too. So please uh, consider uh, uh, presenting. It could be something as simple as an interesting use case. I presented uh, at a um, at a Alassian user group back in, uh, actually back in Washington DC about how the, uh, the laboratory that I was using used Agile uh, practices and used uh, JIRA to do their sample collection and sequencing. And um, a completely non-software related process that fit very well in an agile workflow and fit very well in the software version of JIRA. Um, and they had a backlog, they had a PO, they had a sprints. It was amazing. They did it extremely well. And it was an interesting enough use case that I was able to speak on. And if, in fact, if you uh, go onto YouTube, search for my name and search for uh, laboratory agile, you, should, you could probably find it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you don't need to be an expert. Um, 
if you have something interesting to talk about, uh, please let me know. The, the bar is fairly low. Uh, no offense to Ryan, of course. He, you know, I'm sure he is very good, but, but please, if, you're, if you would like to, please let me know. Um, if you are looking for a job or if you have jobs, this would be the time to, to speak up. I can understand that it might be something you're uncomfortable with if you are here with fellow coworkers, but if you are interested, uh, you can go to our uh, Lassian community that I have posted or that, uh, that, uh, that the URL is on the screen. Also, if you want to take, a, uh, take a, a scan of the QR code, it goes to the same exact place. So if you, have, uh, if you want to post there uh, or something like that, you're interested. So let's, uh, why don't we start first by saying uh, who has a job or who is looking for, for people and that way you guys can connect afterwards. Going once. Going twice. Well, I know all the people from Allianz have a job. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> Capital One is hiring, uh, albeit a bit slower due to COVID. Uh, if you're interested uh, in any agile positions, uh, in any uh, confluence uh, positions or positions in general, uh, you're more than welcome uh, to reach out. Um, so yeah. I don't have, outside of that, I don't have anything else. So we have another quarter, uh, quarter hour left uh, to kind of chat. Uh, maybe a good conversation that we can have between now and then is talking about future, uh, future ACE events. Um, I am, again, not opposed to meeting in person. Though, uh, with that being said, I'm not sure it would be best for us to meet in July. Like I said, typically it's all, it tends to be kind of hard, especially with July 4th. Uh, being uh, a major holiday and it's also very hot and a lot of families take vacations. I was thinking that we would take a break for July, come back in August, perhaps the first or second week of August if you guys are interested in that. The date, I don't have a specific date in mind, but if you guys want to do the 13th, uh, I try to do the first or second Thursday of the month, we can do the 13th. And then we can also decide whether we want to meet in person. So uh, if you have, uh, let's start with the 13th uh, of August. And if you're just here for today, I take no offense. If you just are here to, to see the presentation from Ryan, I'm very happy that you have come. You're more than welcome, of course, to come again uh, in, uh, in August. Um, but if you don't want to, that's okay. You don't need to. Uh, hey, honey. Yes. Sorry, I had a quick question. I didn't want to interrupt the flow too much, but um, since there's so many people from Allianz and they're using Confluence and we have some time, um, I was really interested in hearing about their use case. Um, if they want to chime in on what they're working on, what their projects are, what they're interested in learning, um, that would be great. Okay. Um, why, don't we, why don't we pivot to that then and then we'll go over uh, dates uh, uh, at the end. How does that sound? All right, I'm gonna take silence as acceptance. So I will now clear the floor. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and let's go ahead and um, I'll, I'll open the floor to the Allianz people and anyone else that's using Confluence. What's your use case? What are you guys working on? What's your, what are your pain points? Okay, I guess I can start. Um, like I said, I'm like brand new to this. Um, I've really been working with our um, solutions and delivery team and our optimization team to kind of two part one for um, with solutions and delivery managers like uh, sharing um, project documentation, um, product summaries, project requirements, that sort of thing. Um, and then for optimization, keeping track of like our mock-ups, our test plans, um, some code, test results, that kind of thing. So I feel like for me, being so brand new to Jira, Confluence, everything, I'm still looking, a big part of what I'm doing is checking out a bunch of add-ins and trying to see which ones may help benefit what we're trying to do. Um, 
also just seeing, you know, what the capabilities are, what really is out there. So if you guys have any recommendations or anything exciting that you've been doing with it, um, I guess that's just a little bit of background for the limited bit that I've been doing. Yeah, I remember people were interested in learning more about the add-on. So I'll, I'm going to cover a little bit. I'll hit on some add-ons. I'll, I'll talk about some of the macros. Um, and then we can, you know, there's lots and lots and lots of add-ons that you can go through. So I'll sort of talk about some of the ones that are out there. But um, I'm not going to really get into the marketplace that's out there as far as add-ons. I think that would be a great topic, though. Hi, this is Jerry. Um, just to kind of piggyback on Olivia. So I'm actually working on an Elastian Suite um, upgrade project. Um, and we are shifting our focus to actually upgrade um, our, our Confluence to be able to implement um, the external share on Confluence to be able to um, use that as a platform with um, external partners um, to be able to um, share documentation so any information um, guidance or um, education that I can get just on Confluence um, I'm seeking out and it's going to be very beneficial um, and then also after that we will be looking at um, changing our platform to be able to um, add some additional add-ons that um, our business teams have requested so I was going to say, I, the external, that means like outside of the organization, right? Yes. Outside yeah. of Allianz? Cool. Yeah. Like clients, you said? Yeah, some of our partners. Yeah. Oh, partners. Okay. Yeah. We call our clients partners. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah, um, externally accessible uh, Confluence is, uh, uh, of course, 100% possible. And um, in fact, it's always fun when I'm when I personally am looking for documentation, and it turns out that the software that I'm using their documentation is in Confluence. I'm like, oh, this is fun, um, and uh, it's it's a bit of a challenge, especially if you're using it both internal uh, for internal control, uh, internal documentation control, and you're using it ex for external uh, document control. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, finicking with the permissions and it's something that, um, I, I don't know if Ryan, you're going to discuss, but um, I know permissions in and of itself is a very, very complex topic uh, and uh, could, I could probably talk just 30 minutes on permissions alone. Yeah, that, and, that is. Yeah. That's like its own presentation. Yeah. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good topic. Anyone else? Use cases? Uh, this is Carrie. Uh, one of the projects that I'm working, or the only project I'm working on right now is uh, we are upgrading our back office system and we've had, um, you know, trainings, um, both technical and more so maybe a little bit more on the business side. And we recorded those trainings. Um, we are using Confluence as a repository for like many different parts of the project. But um, one part in particular I was wondering about was specifically around training. Um, we've saved the documentation out to a page on Confluence, but I'd also like to save the recordings um, that we took over WebEx out there, but obviously the files are huge. Is there any way to actually save those very large files out to Confluence? So Mike, some of this is, Michael probably can speak to some of this. Uh, a lot of that is based on the way that the Confluence administration is set up. Confluence itself does do um, uh, content management and will allow you to put documents and store documents inside of it. And I'll go through some of that uh, as we go through this. Um, but uh, it does have limits and it is not really an optimized content management system. 
So um, a better practice is to store specifically large files somewhere else, but you can use all the advantages that Confluence brings to the table as far as uh, the way that it's organized and how it integrates in with Jira and other elements. That's a, a, a typical best practice. Um, my, I'll be honest, the way I, I like to do it is I will frequently store the shared documents, I'm sorry, the shared uh, recordings usually they're MP4 recordings. I'll put them inside of a SharePoint folder that I'll make available, uh, externally available. Um, and then I will link to them inside of Confluence. Uh, one of the things Confluence can do is you can do short names so you don't have to see the hyperlink inside of the Confluence uh, page unless you want to. So uh, that, that's probably the best best practice. I don't know, Michael, have you got any other sort of- No, no, practice? I think you hit the nail right on the head. Um, uh, uh, Confluence is really, really good at, at small attachments. So I think 10, 25 megabytes, and that's typically the default uh, size for attachments in Confluence pages. And it's really more designed like for like, uh, like Visio documents or things that you want to have embedded into uh, into uh, a document within Confluence. I mean, you can, I mean, uh, and Ryan is right, that you can use it to, to store files. Your administrator would just need to say, okay, allow, um, you know, 200 gigabytes as the maximum file size, and then there you go. Um, but you're gonna run into a couple of issues. The biggest one being is that the server just can't handle it, because uh, it's gonna stream the, the video, and, the, and, the, and Confluence is just not designed for streaming, uh, streaming content. It can, uh, just like any other web, uh, web application can, but it'll struggle because it's just not optimized for it. Um, the way that I would recommend, uh, very similar to Ryan, um, at Capital One we use Google Drive um, and just load it there, make sure that the URL is fully available and then use the embed feature within Confluence to share that out. Um, even then, even then, it's it's hard um, because it, because of how Confluent manages the the content. Um, now, if your goal is version control, that's a diff that might be a different conversation. Uh, like if you're concerned with saying, okay, so let's say you have version one of a particular video and that's 300 megabytes or something, and you need to now go back and do a version two or version three or whatever. Uh, that might be a, 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 an example where I could see Confluence providing a level of an advantage because it'll keep track of that. Confluence will do a really good job of keeping versions uh, in line, though I don't know if the benefit that you get from that will outweigh the 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 overhead required to do it in Confluence. Because, like I said, you have the server administrator has to set that limit. And if they allow, let's say, 500, uh, 500 megabytes or 200 gigabytes or whatever, you know, it opens it up to abuse. And of course, because Confluence is all user authenticated, if someone decided to just throw a bunch of like, you know, movies and TV shows as a file share onto your Confluence instance, it could be pretty easy to track. Um, but you know, it's it's still more overhead that's needed in order to, to make that work. But that's a very good question. Um, but yeah, I would, I would follow what Ryan said and, and, and have an external file uh, share um, and, make, uh, and, and make that happen. So hopefully that helps to uh, answer your question. Yes, thank you. All right, we have about two more minutes. Uh, any other questions uh, before Ryan gets started? All right, 40 seconds. Uh, if you need to grab a drink or something like that, go ahead and do so, and then we'll get started shortly. Michael, you want me to start sharing my screen? Sure, sounds like a good idea. Okay, uh, you have to enable it. Yeah, no Zoom, um, what do they call it? 
Zoom bombing. Zoom bombing, yeah, no Zoom bombing. Yeah, unless you bring your dog. I was gonna say, I see at least one pet on Olivia's screen. Yeah. Yep. This is oh. Snickers. Hello. Oh. Hey, Ryan, can, That's what we needed. how do you, uh, can you request uh, access to share the screen or do I need to give you access? Cause I don't see- You have to option. give me access. So in the bottom, there is a- uh, I see the share screen. Okay. Actually try clicking on my um, picture and then do the ellipse. And then I think there's one that says enable. Uh oh, Michael, we lost your uh, audio. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I was using push to talk. Um, I can't figure that part out. So let's see, um, spotlight video, make host, allow record, rename put in waiting room or report. No, I don't think either one of those. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do multiple per, uh, participants can share simultaneously. Hopefully that won't. Uh, um, It'll be fine. Yeah. All right. You're, you're still the administrator and so you still have the rights to kick people off. All right. I will try not to abuse that privilege. All right. So. Let me know if you're seeing my screen. Yep, we can see it. Okay, excellent. So welcome everybody. Thanks very much uh, for joining me. Uh, my name is Ryan Sly. I am uh, with Smith. Uh, most people have never heard of Smith. That's because I'm the only Smith employee in all of Virginia. Uh, we are uh, smith.co. Uh, we are a uh, small, um, e-commerce uh, consulting firm. So uh, I do a lot of uh, large e-commerce uh, implementations, but usually it's SAP's uh, uh, commerce cloud. Um, one of the main tools that we use, that we use with just about every one of our clients and that we use internally as well extensively is Jira and Confluence. So one of the things I'm gonna talk about today, the thing I'm gonna talk about today is gonna be basically talking about Confluence itself, giving you a baseline, sort of what are some of its capabilities, talk a little bit about the integration between Confluence and Jira. Specifically, I'll talk a that there are other integration elements. And then more importantly, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna try and sprinkle in best practices uh, frequently throughout the different uh, parts. Anybody have any questions before I get started? All right. All right, I got a note here that says, the host has spotlighted my video. So whatever you did, awesome, thanks for spotlighting. So here's what we're gonna cover. I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro to Confluence. Um, and at, I should also mention it to anybody. Uh, feel free to stop me as we go along. Um, I'm not sure from a, a volume standpoint or a mic standpoint. Uh, most of the time you should be on mute, but I, you can just mention, hey, Ryan, I've got a question, that kind of thing. That's great. I don't mind stopping at any point in time during the, the presentation. So I'll go through a little introduction. I will then talk a little bit about the linkages between Jira and Confluence, the big deltas and the differences. I'll then get in and we'll do some hands-on with Confluence. So I will show you how to do some Confluence, how to do some organization inside of Confluence. We'll talk a little bit about how to add content. There is a ton of content that you can add and ways to add it. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about collaboration and the way that you can uh, leverage the uh, collaboration capabilities inside of Confluence. And then finally, I'm gonna hit on a few other best practices that I just wanna pass on and then we'll cover any specific questions. Anybody got any questions on that as a presentation? All right, let's get into it. So let's start with the introduction. Um, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually, I don't know if this, yeah. I'm gonna actually stop my video just in case there's any type of a lag. There's, there's a lot of people at my house using the internet, so you just never know. Um, let, stop me though if you can't uh, see or if, I, if my audio starts to get worse. All right, so some of the benefits of Confluence. So you can see on the image on the left, that um, before people started to use Confluence and what you guys are probably dealing with to a certain extent today is you have lots of different documents, lots of different conversations, lots of different attachments. You'll have email, you'll have um, regular mail, you'll have chats. They'll all be in lots of different places. One of the things that Confluence will uh, try to do is try to organize all that. 
The main advantage though to Confluence is organizing in reference to JIRA. So I rarely see Confluence used as a standalone document management system, mainly because it's not really the best document management system uh, per what Michael and I were just talking about before. There are other systems that do a much better job with large files or multiple files or doing tagging, things like that. But Confluence does a very good job with lots of different elements. Its best job though is to integrate seamlessly with um, Jira and the other Atlassian tools. Um, in the old days, one of the Atlassian tools that we used to all use is something called HipChat. Um, if you use a chat uh, tool right now, like um, uh, Teams or uh, Teams does lots of other th things as well. If you use Slack, um, HipChat used to be one of those tools. Um, Atlassian found that not as many people were using um, HipChat that they were using other elements. And so they sold off HipChat. Um, but that was one of the other pieces. Um, you're probably using something like Bitbucket or there are some other Atlassian tools that are out there. Also, Atlassian is being very aggressive at adding and rolling out new tools. So, you know, if you uh, just do a Google search on Atlassian tools, you'll find a plethora of things that they use. Most of them are built to actually integrate with Confluence. So you should see more integration there. Um, and then finally, one of Atlassian's and Confluence's best uh, capabilities is its ability to do add-ins. Um, for it to have other linkages to outside tools and, and, uh, and uh, applications. Um, they provide a robust API. So if you have a external tool or if you have an external system that you want to have automatically integrate with Confluence and you think that's something you want to offer out to the marketplace, that's something that Confluence um, will certainly make available. You may have questions on the, some of the benefits. All right, let's get going in here. So what exactly is Confluence? It is an online application. Um, right now, technically it is both um, an online, but you can also get a server version. However, they're actively moving away from having people use the server versions. Um, so there's a lot of reasons that they wanna try and encourage people to go, have it be more of an online application. But it's really built to organize um, teams into uh, so that they can organize their content so that they can um, to emphasize discussions and then really focus around doing their work. Um, where do I put my stuff? So everything is Confluence is actually organized into spaces. And we'll talk about that and I'll highlight, highlight that in a second. So Confluence is made up of a series of spaces. Um, Jura is made up of a series of projects. They are not the same, although you could have one space per Jira project, and a lot of companies will do it that way. However, there are advantages to having one Confluence space have multiple Jira projects. I've not seen a case where one Jira project needed multiple um, Confluence spaces, and later on we can have a whole conversation around Jira as, it, as itself, and, and uh, my feelings of uh, Jira is the reason they call them Jira projects is you should have a new unique Jira element for each sort of project that you're doing. The exception would be if you're running a long term running Kanban type uh, uh, exercise. But anyway, uh, the net of it is uh, I recommend multiple Jira inst influence, uh, instances, but you could uh, use a single inst instance of Confluence across multiple Jiras. I've seen that successfully done in several places. How are these spaces organized? So the spaces are basically made up of pages. So as with most document management systems, you have the file and the, uh, uh, the file cabinet and pages and folders concept. Um, one of the key things that um, separates Confluence is they've gotten rid of the whole folder concept. So there are no folders inside of Confluence. Um, and you could think of the uh, spaces as a file cabinet. Um, so in essence, you really just have those two things. You have a series of pages. One of the things we'll talk about is the ability to organize those those pages and to create a virtual folder if you needed to to show the relative pages that are inside of that folder. And we'll all we'll go through those details. Anybody have questions? All right. As I mentioned, what are the big differences? So Confluence is really organized in spaces. It is a documentation tool. It's easy to create these pages. Um, there, it's just a click of a button. Mostly anyone, depending on the, your settings, but um, the default is that anybody can create pages. Um, the key thing that you need to be careful with Confluence is it's so easy to create pages, you don't want to create too many pages. And um, frequently people will create pages and forget where they are or lose them or put them at the root level and will dirty up the space. So one of the things as all Confluence users will find is that there's a lot of junk out there. 
So leveraging and utilizing and putting those pages in the correct space and then um, using the search functions to be able to find those and the correct way to tag and to um, uh, uh, notate those pages so you can find them later on. That's one of the keys to being successful with Confluent. Jira, on the other hand, is really based on the ticket metaphor. So instead of pages, you have tickets. And then those tickets can be um, organized and moved throughout a customizable workflow. Um, one of the real advantages to Jira that I use a lot is it has a jQuery, a querying language that allows you to do um, complex querying of those tickets. So um, if anybody, we'll, we'll do a whole, uh, uh, Michael or somebody else will do a whole other presentation on Jira as a whole, but just want everybody to be familiar that there is a difference between Jira and Confluence. Don't think that they're all the same. All right, so how do we link Confluence and Jira? So first of all, you've got the space, and then inside of that space, you've got pages. And each of those pages can have be arranged into subsets, and you can easily drag and drop those pages. Um, you can reference them, and then each of those pages can have customized um, content that is placed inside of them. You can also have some specialty things that, are, that uh, Confluence makes, um, uh, un that are unique to Confluence that you can add into those spaces. Um, but there are also some um, uh, custom pages that you will only find in a specific Confluence page. And so I'll show you that. And then I'll also show you sort of how to, how to use the, uh, the uh, breadcrumb trail and go through those things. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the organization. So now comes the demo part. Um, so here's the things I'm gonna cover. I'll cover creating a space, I'll cover organizing it, I'll cover um, a little bit, I'll talk about some naming conventions, We'll talk about some of the, um, the, the uh, my recommendation to stay away from special characters in the naming. Um, it, it's okay if you do, um, but I'll show you what happens if you do. Um, then we'll differentiate the, how to differentiate pages one from another. I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we'll talk about meeting notes and how Confluence is a great tool for creating and uh, documenting meeting notes. Um, I'll share some best practices on how to do that. We'll talk a little bit about the existing te templates that are out there. Um, I'll talk about the concept of the home page, the Confluence home page, and how you how they're emphasizing it. Confluence has made a lot of changes lately, especially into the online version, on how they want you to sort of leverage your home page as a easy way to find things and and to um, navigate around your different spaces. Um, we'll talk a little bit about my recommendations for navigating in the space around to do. Uh, lists that you can uh, pretty quickly create inside of Confluence. And then I'll talk a little bit about the nine box. Anybody have questions on it before I jump in? All right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to switch over to this one and then switch to that one and that one. There it is. All right, let me know. Can you guys see a Confluence page right now? I see it. Awesome. Yep. Thanks, Tanya. Um, all right, so first things first, this is a home page inside of Confluence. So let's talk a little bit about the layout. This is the latest version. This is also the free version. So um, we talked about this in a previous meeting. I don't know if anybody's um, aware. Confluence and, and Jira are now free to anyone that wants to use them. Um, th what they're trying to do is they're trying to develop a, a baseline. A, they're trying to get as many people excited about Confluence as, you can, as possible. Um, and one of the ways they're doing that is just basically making it free. So what I've done is I've taken the free version and I've set up a space. You can always tell the space name. So um, most of, as I mentioned, Atlassian is trying to emphasize, trying to push people towards using their servers and sharing inside of their cloud. So most of the, not all, but many of the um, Confluence sites that you guys will be exposed to should say uh, the space name .atlassian.net. Um, and that is how, that's the easy way of finding it. A lot of people lately have gotten to, gotten out of like putting uh, um, bookmarks and then they just go directly into the address line and start typing in the name of the space. And that's a, a quick and easy way to get into your Confluence space. At the top, you'll see then the, um, the home bar. Um, this has changed recently. At, at one point it used to be on the left-hand side, but they're trying to push everybody towards using a, a uh, a top bar nav, um, so you'll see this. Uh, this is the ubiquitous search bar. You should see that on every page. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the notifications in the home, 
uh, the help page. I'm not going to talk about settings inside of Confluence. We could do that in another session. And then if you are logged in, you will see your your uh, your face or whatever your initials are uh, here. Down underneath the home page, so you can tell we are in the home page here. Um, as you see, as I do a hover over here, you'll see um, that there are some uh, letters that come up. That is keyboard shortcuts. So Confluence, or so Atlassian has added a lot of keyboard shortcuts into uh, into the system. So frequently, if you'll go around these spaces, you'll see some keyboard shortcuts in some places. Not everything has a keyboard shortcut, but many of them do, and uh, they've added those by doing the hover. All right. So first thing is creating a space. So I've already created a space. Let's create another one though, real quick. It is as easy as, as going to the Confluence homepage and finding spaces and say, create a space. And it is nothing more than answering a couple of questions on creating a space. So um, this is a great opportunity for input. What do you guys want to call the space? Um, now, so as someone who uses Trello, sorry if this is a really basic question, is creating a space almost like creating a board? It is uh, very similar because Trello is organized around their boards. So yes, okay. the easier way to think about it is um, Confluence. Uh, is, co a Confluence space is very similar to a Jira project. So I would okay. say probably Trello board, Jira project, and Confluence space are all roughly analogous. Again, you can have each one can be related to multiple, um, uh, but yes, you can do multiple things. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit more analogous to a list. Uh, the reason why I don't think the board oh. analogy fits is because boards are isolated from each other, um, so you can't search. Um, you can't search between two separate okay. boards, um, but you can within a list. So I mean, it's not a perfect analogy, but it, it, if I had to pick one, I would say it's more closer to lists. Okay. No worries. So. Um, this is setting up our new space and then to what Michael just said we, later on we'll search across the different spaces that we've got here. That's one of the cool things that it does. As you can see there's some templates for the different types of spaces. We're just going to go with a blank one. Typically that's what I'll stick with just because I like to customize it for myself and I don't want uh, if you pick one of these templates it adds a bunch of junk in there and then I have to strip most of that stuff out. So I'm going to start with just a blank one. Um, give me a suggestion. What, what do you guys want to call this? I was going to say Allianz team. There's a lot of you. What yeah. about you guys? Except now you guys are going to make me spell Allianz. A-L-L-I-A-N-E-Z. Z? Is that good? There you go. All right. Super. So when I create the space, you'll see the name here. And we're just going to call it Allianz Sample Space. Oh, wait. I can't call it that. We'll just call it the sample. Because as you can see, Confluence tries to provide a recommended prefix. So if you're familiar, yeah, I know, I did that. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to use it. that prefix though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so at work, might not use that as your example, but maybe you could and get away with it because I'm just putting in the, it just go, it defaults to the first three letters. So just saying. So in this case, we'll just call it sample. We'll keep it clean for, you know, those at home. Um, so as you can see, it does come up with a space key. The space key is going to be the prefix to all of the pages that you create. Um, but also, if you have to reference back to things, this will allow you, this is just another shortcut uh, to finding your stuff. So we'll go with that. Um, and as you can see, there are space permissions. As Michael indicated before, um, permissions is probably a whole other separate presentation. Um, the st my standard answer to permissions is use groups rather than doing individual permissions. It will save you a ton of heartache later on. Okay, so this is the, um, the first page that is created when you start up a, um, a, uh, a, a uh, space. Um, as on the left you, is the left-hand navigation. This navigation can be removed, so you can hide it or you can pull it back out. Also, if you hide it, if you do a hover over, it'll pop out and pop back in, okay? Also, if you have some big names to things, you can make it bigger if you want. So, uh, but uh, most people, it's probably not a good idea to do this because it'll shorten it for you. So I like to just leave it right around there. And then most of the time I will keep it collapsed. Again, you can see that there's a shortcut for collapsing or expanding um, the, uh, the left-hand uh, uh, pane. Um, so 
one of the things that we'll do, so we can add shortcuts, there are no pages yet. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is create a page. So how hard is it? We're just going to go up here. We're going to say create. Um, and we're going to we're going to see the different samples. So this is the free version. So there aren't any templates. If you add, if you include add-ins into Confluence, frequently you will get additional templates. However, one of the things you'll find is there's a ton out there. You could spend all day just creating these sample templates and figuring out what's inside of them. Most of them are fairly straightforward, but Atlassian has done an outstanding job and they're really putting a lot of effort into encouraging you to use their templates. Um, again, I'm kind of old school and obnoxious and I don't want to have to go in there and edit all the stuff that's in there and pull it all back out. So I have a tendency to start with blank pages. So we will call, we'll start with this page. So the first thing you'll notice is it just kicks me right in. It doesn't ask me for a name. But as a good um, uh, Atlassian user, that's one of the first things I need to do is I need to give it a name. So let's give it a name. We're in Allianz, so this is gonna be the um, uh, intro page of goodness. So that's what we're gonna call this page. Um, one of the things that is gonna be one of my very first tips is from a naming convention standpoint is, I, A, I like to stay away from special characters. So if it's not a number or a letter, um, you can also do uh, dashes, those are okay. Um, and spaces are okay as well. But if it's any, if you have to hold down shift and hit any keys, I typically don't like to put that in my headers. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that in just a second. Um, and then inside of the body of it down here, you can add whatever you wanna add. You can simply put in some text. This is just a bunch. Of, oh, there you go. Of text. Okay. Um, you can also add other elements. So there's a, a bar across the top to help you add some things. So if you want to add action items, um, it'll prompt you with what to do. Um, and it does a couple of things. One, it'll give you an idea of what to add to action. Um, but it also reminded you, hey, I can assign this to somebody. So if I want to assign it to myself, okay, great, super. I can assign it to myself. So I assign that it to myself using the ampersand sign. Okay, um, there's, uh, you can make links. Confluence lately has uh, changed the way they do their linking. And right now it is very, very basic linking. So one of the things that um, you'll see is they want to do just a basic link. So they will allow you to link to a recently added page um, or they will actually allow you to put in, so if you scroll this dude, they'll allow you to link into a hyperlink if you want to. You can add attachments. You can do another mention, which is a reference to another person. You can add these really cool emojis, which everybody loves to do, but I tend to find them to be not very businessy. So I don't know why that's always there. Or you can do tables. Tables, they've recently done an, an overhaul of tables that I can spend a whole lot of time on tables and I'm not gonna spend too much time here. Um, layouts is another cool thing. I'm not gonna spend too much time on layouts. Uh, one of the things I will um, recommend to you is try layouts. Um, it is useful to, uh, to get a sense of the way that they work. So you'll do three column, two column. If you decide that you don't wanna do any layouts at all, um, you can go in here and you can get rid of the layouts completely. A layout is basically just a section inside of your um, inside of uh, your page. In the old days, they had a section indicator up here, but they've changed that to just allow you to do a layout. Then Ryan, the bet, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. So on the action item where you put at Ryan Sly, yep. or does it notify that person that they have that action item? Oh, know. you're jumping ahead. So yes, uh, yeah. Um, Bill, that's one of the things that uh, it does allow you to do, and I'll show you. Um, that is one of the to-do lists that you can do later on. That is uh, pretty cool about Jira is uh, about Confluence is it automatically will start throwing those in. Um, so I'll talk about that in just a second. But yeah, it does. It then you can then go back and pull that out, and I'll show you one of the easiest ways to pull that out. Um, all right. So we were talking about the plus sign. This is all the other neat, nifty, cool things that you can add in there. Um, there is other stuff up here, so you can add, uh, you can change the the, um, the outline of things. I typically will use this a lot. So um, if I wanted to organize my stuff into um, basically, I want to call it 
section one. And then down here, I want to call this section two. And I want to call this section two A, super. Um, and right now it doesn't look all that great, but if I go ahead and highlight these dudes and, and apply a heading, just like you would to any other Word doc or, um, uh, or even HTML, uh, you, uh, it do, it'll do this. So you can also, you know, one of the things inside of Confluence you can do is you can edit the fonts. You can edit the sizes for these different sections. So if you wanna do that, that's something else that uh, you can do from an administration standpoint. One of the other things that I wanted to call out here is the ability, um, th one of the new things that they've added is this really narrow um, layout. Most of that is because they're trying to make Confluence to be more tablet and mobile friendly. So you'll see that most, a lot of times the pages will start in this sort of narrowed view. So one of the things I have to frequently teach people that are new to this is go with the wide view. Mainly, we are using these on computers. I recommend that you always start this dude out in full width mode, not in the reduced uh, uh, width. But that's the way a lot of times it starts out. So that is a tip, is try and use that dude as often as possible. Okay, so we've done a couple of things there. One of the other things we could do is before this, if I wanted to add in a table of contents, I could simply go down to here and say table of contents. And then if I want to change around the way the table of contents is organized, if I don't want to make it as a list, if I want to make it flat, um, I like the list format. I like the disk is the prefix, the little bob that goes in front of it. So if you want to change that, you can. There's also a ton of, uh, of things online. So if you want to learn more about how to edit the table of contents, you could do more of that. That is simply go out to the Atlassian site and do that. But that's my recommendation is it's very easy to just throw in a table of contents. Okay, um, I have a maybe yeah, not sure. smart question, sorry. Uh, when do you um, switch to creating a new space instead of just having, because I love endless tables of contents and I can just imagine myself keeping everyone literally on the same page forever. Because sure. there's a table of contents. So uh, the recommendation here is you can see in the breadcrumb above, that this is the name of my um, space. Try and do a space. I would recommend that you have spaces that were based around things that don't change very frequently. Um, and in some cases, you could keep, you know, uh, one space could keep a lot of things for a long time. I recommend staying away from anything that says things like spaces where, you know, like I recommend staying away from calling this the Allian space. The main reason for that is, yeah, everything would fall underneath that one space and then you'd have a ton of junk in here at some point. So I recommend instead break it down, typically project or, um, or program. So if it is a specific thing with a, uh, uh, that is time box, um, or if it is multiple time box projects that are all related to a, co to a common um, uh, theme or program, then I recommend organizing it that way. Thank you, that sounds good. Yep, you bet. All right, so we've put some content, content in here. It's not much and it's not super pretty. There are some really, really pretty cool things in here. Um, one of my favorite things to use is the status doodad. Um, I like these, I put these into pretty much all of my status reports. Um, so, you know, all things, I'll, uh, this will say like in progress. Um, and I'll mark it as green because I like it things that are in progress. So you can drop in things like that. There's a ton of content and we'll cover more of that in a second when we get out of the organization space. But this is our sample page. So it's as easy as typing it up, making sure that you gave it a good, um, a good name and then hitting the publish button. Okay, you'll see it takes just a second for it to publish. And then you'll see this is the page. So I want, if I wanna get rid of it, that's the page that's out there. Um, and then you'll see now, that's now the reference to my page. Okay, that's great. So what if we wanted to add another page? So let's do another page. Let's just add another blank page and we will be as simple. One, I'll keep it narrow. So we'll call this um, the narrow page. Okay, and then we're just gonna add some stuff into the body of it down here. You don't have to add anything. You can add a completely blank page if you want, but I don't recommend it. Okay, so we added another page. If we go over here, we'll say, hey, look, there's the narrow page. And it looks like it's inside of this other page. In fact, 
I can um, I can uh, I can collapse and uh, expand on the one page. So hey, that's kind of interesting. That that makes it look like uh, the narrow page is now a subset inside of the intro page. Hey, I wonder if I go back to intro page, what's it going to look like? Oh, I don't see anything here. Nothing, no references to that other page I made. I wonder how I can get back to that. Well, maybe if I pop this dude out here, we'll pop that guy open. Oh, there it is. I can get back to that narrow page pretty easily there. Now, what if I decided, you know, the narrow page is great, but it doesn't really have anything in it. You know, what would I, how would I get back in there and edit that? So you can go up here and you can edit, you can use the pencil to edit that page at any time. Or as I frequently like to do, and as, once you get into these dudes that often, you'll simply hit the E key. And uh, that will allow you to, uh, to basically uh, put more stuff on the page. Okay, at this point, I can also add, and let's say I want to add a really cool Atlassian uh, widgety thing. So I have a couple of Atlassian pictures. Let's go down, where is my pictures and my personal? And I apologize, this is all my work stuff. Um, We'll go under Ace and let's just add one of these really cool Atlassian logos. There it is. So I've dropped this image in there. Um, I can also, if I wanted to, I could go into Finder and pick a different image and basically click, all right, click and drag. All right. Not going to let me do my click and drag, but you can. Oh. Maybe it needs to be another window and maybe it's because I'm sharing my screen. Oh, there it is. So it allows me to click and drag and drop that dude in there. It'll load and then they're in there. So awesome. There are my two files. I can sit insert and there they are. Now, let's say I don't like one of these dudes. Let's say it's like, yeah, beer. That's, this is a, uh, I'm not really a big fan of that. You know, maybe I want that to be left justified. Maybe this one I don't like at all. So I want to get rid of it. Okay, fine. I got rid of it. Now, uh, that looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and publish that page. My narrow stuff page is there. Oh, hey, it made a little bigger. Okay, that's interesting. That, that's good to know. Um, I wonder where that other one was that I put in here. Um, is, is, it, is it gone? So one of the things you can do is you can manage the uh, images or the attachments that have been included here. You go up here to the ellipse button. You go down here and you say, hey, there are two attachments associated with this. I wonder what they are. Sure enough, those are the two images that I just added in there. So if I needed to pull that other image back in, I could. Also, I can drag and drop other document or uh, other uh, attachments into this page, or I can use this to go and find those attachments. So you can see there's lots of different ways to do this, to add, and you can add whatever you wanna add. Um, you, I, I don't, there's a way that you can, um, and, uh, and Michael, you may know more about this than I do, um, uh, there's a way that you can restrict things like the executables and uh, things that may have viruses in them if you want to restrict that. But to a large extent, you can drop just about any type of file here that you want. Okay, so we've created a couple of pages. We've um, shown over here, how do I find those pages? I've talked a little bit about the naming convention. One of the cool things that you'll be able to do later on is if you ever need to send this page to somebody, you can simply grab the name of the page and what you'll see is the name of the page is simply written into the URL itself. Now, one of the drawbacks to using special characters, if I go into edit, and if I change the narrow page to say the narrow page and add some stuff at the end of it, is it gonna let me do that? Sure, I can publish that page and it's gonna let me keep that, uh, those characters in there. However, um, if I go back to this page, and if I look back to here, ah, oh, you know what, I already saved it. Um, so it didn't keep those special characters up here in the URL. So that's one of the reasons that I'd like to try and stay away from um, special characters in here. Um, but that, you know, that's a, that's a, a best practice that's up to you guys. All right. So we've hey, done a couple. Uh, yeah, uh, question. Yeah, Ryan, <clears throat> try an ampersand. <laughs> okay. So if we I, I mean, I, I, I think I know where you're going with this. So right. Yeah, try, try an ampersand. Ampersand, more stuff. Okay, and then we hit publish. Yeah. Oh, so they fixed it. They fixed it. Yeah. They did. So what, what Michael's, he's on to me. He knows in the old days, if you did something that had extra weird characters in here, um, it would simply change this whole part of the name into just a number. 
and it was obnoxious because you couldn't tell what you were looking at anymore. So, yeah, all right, that's good. Atlassian is constantly innovating. One of the reasons I encourage everybody to use the cloud version is because frequently you'll be able to take advantage of their innovations. So, yeah, that's a good point, Michael. That, um, I, I, you know, we all try to do the same thing, but uh, recommendation is just try and stay away from it. In this case, the ampersand just isn't shown. All those weird characters we're using weren't shown. So I recommend just sort of staying away from them. If you happen to put it in there, you can. I, I do. I do have a question for you, Ryan. Yeah, sure. Um, now, when you send out this link, right, the the uh, the narrow page and more stuff, uh, that's great if you send it out. But what if you change the the title later on? That URL wouldn't work anymore. Is that right? So it lasts, uh, Confluence actually keeps track of the old names of things. Typically, what will happen though is that it doesn't provide backward uh, support. So if I had passed out the narrow page as a URL and went to that. Um, it would not allow me, you know what, let's, let's, let's try a little trick here. Um, I, I can tell you what it's going to do is it's going to send you to the, um, the home page of the space, but let's try a little something. So if we copy that page, we go back into here and the old name for it was removing the and more stuff. So if we go out there and go to that page, what are we going to get? It should take us Oh. It did remember us. Oh. Yeah. So it'll, it'll take you one of two places. It'll either take you here or it'll take you to the Confluence homepage for that space. That's, that's typically what would happen. So those are the two different um, uh, things that typically happen. But, you know, Confluence, as we said, they're always learning. They're always adjusting and trying to fix new things. All right. Well, so we it, If I may yeah. interject real quick. Yep. So um, I don't know uh, if Allianz has their own hosted instance, like you guys have the server version. Some of the features that you're seeing on the web version are not, there. It, it, there's no, it, there is a level of feature parity, but it's not 100%. Uh, so the, the feature that you just saw may not be available for your instance. And uh, I, I will admit, Ryan, I, it was a bit of a leading question. I actually knew the answer. Uh, but on the server version, it's quite possible that if you try to go to an old URL, it won't allow you to. It'll say this page does not exist, but it may have moved to a new uh, location. So that is something that might happen on the server version. Now, one of the recommendations that I make when you send out a link is instead of sending out the link that you have on the Confluence page, instead uh, uh, send out the short URL. So um, Ryan, if you press the K button on your keyboard, you should get a share menu. And you'll notice that there is a tiny link URL. Now that tiny link will never change for the life of the page, even if you change spaces. So if you move this space, uh, or if you move this page into a different space, that short URL or that tiny URL will never, never change. Uh, and it's the equivalent of sending the page ID, which is a whole another subject that we won't cover here. Uh, yep. But just wanted to let you know. Yep, and, and that's a good point. If you're working in a large organization that has a ton of spaces, this is definitely something that happens, is moving things around. Um, uh, so you can tell Michael's, uh, he's had that pain point uh, before. It, this is Jerry, I have a quick question. So sure. does, is this option, do you know if this option is available to the, um, what, the server-based instance? So, this, so we are on the cloud right now. This is using the cloud version of um, Confluence, but it depends if you're corp like right now, if you go out to your Jira site and um, and go into Jira and look at is the is it being hosted internally or is it got is it uh, basically got a Atlassian.net at the end of it? It's internal. It's on our server. Okay. So what you, uh, what that means is uh, many of the things that we're looking at here you may not have access to. So I'll try and speak to as many of the ones that I remember. Uh, from the old days, but uh, one of the advantages to uh, using the cloud version is you get a lot of the sort of newer, later, later uh, tools and capabilities. And basically, they fix things in the server version, the cloud version first, and then they'll propagate it down to the server version at some point. But as I mentioned, one of the things they're, they're doing very subtly is they're trying to slowly but surely move people away from that. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. No and, we have, and we have an old version. Yep. For like 565. And sure. Like and, and so some of these things won't work for you guys. A lot of the basics that I'm teaching you 
though all of this stuff is good for old stuff. So um, you should be able to get over here to the pages. You should be able to use the ellipse button to go and find uh, attachments. Um, they, even the old versions will have the nine box. So we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. In some cases, this header bar is down on the left. Yeah. It depends on what version. I mean, there are some changes. Um, I've been using this since 2014. Um, so um, if you get stuck, um, I at some point, if you hit me up offline, my, uh, my email stuff's at the end here. I I'm happy to walk you guys through and sort of, uh, uh, you know, if you want to share your screen one night and show me how do I do this and that, I'm happy to just get on and show you how to fix these things. I do that all the time for work anyway. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, so we talked about organizing these things into spaces. Uh, and we've done spaces, we've done pages. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show over here, and you might not have this in your version, but um, one of the things in this version is you can take a page and you can move it around. So I can move that. Uh, you know what? I probably need multiple pages. Let's do this. Let's add another page. So we'll go back to my intro page, and we'll call this the, uh, the third page. That's right. It is the third page. I'm not going to so put anything in it because um, I'm bored. Um, yep. Question? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I actually had a use case. Um, I work for a PR agency and we have clients who kind of come and go as they have large announcements. Mm -hmm. So imagining we're moving the pages around. If I had a space called, you know, current clients, a space called past clients, a space called prospect clients, and a prospect became a current client, I could grab the prospect's page and move it into like under a different page or into a new space, you know, to say, oh, now they're part of this group. Yeah, you could, Tanya, I, I wouldn't recommend it. And the, here's the reason. Um, for okay. each of those clients, you typically uh -huh. would set them up into a user group and you would normally assign those user groups to those spaces. That's the, you, you would want to sort of, they would be uh, within a group or a meta group. And then typically I'd assign that group into that space. Um, okay. And then the problem you would run into is if your, <laughs> if your old client had uh -huh. the link to the current space inside of Confluence, you would have to go out and basically strip everybody out that shouldn't have it and then add people back in. So it, it, I work mm. for a consulting firm. And so a lot of times we will use our uh, Confluence uh, uh, Jira Atlassian instance. Um, and we will make it available to them. Um, and then for, you know, six months afterwards, we'll let them, if they want to go out to our confluence space and, and go look, they can. But at some point, we then will sunset it. And that's one of the things we'll use is to leverage it is the, hey, if you want, you know, access into our confluence all the time, I'm still paying for your license. So um, that sometimes is not always the best idea. But that is, you could certainly do it that way. That is a way of, of organizing things into sort of current past and future type. So, so Ryan, so um, Jerry alluded this to this earlier. The add-on we're looking at is external share for Confluence. Um, it's actually you can; they don't have to have a license. You give them permission um, and links that they can go to, and then you can just expire the links. They do not have to have a license to get into Confluence. They're limited to what they can do. Excellent. Yeah, in the old days, we had to worry about, you know, how many licenses we paid for. And so we, we, we used that as an excuse to, uh, to make people pay us to keep uh, hosting their stuff. But you're right. The only concern I would have, um, I, I, I think that, and Bill, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but I, you should probably look into it, is um, if you keep hosting everybody else's content and they can all get into it, at some point you'll run into some sort of space limitations. Yeah, we're not going to host their content. It's our content that they have access to. Okay. Okay, super. I, I, I certainly think that that's something you guys could do long term. Yes. All right. So we talked a little bit about these. We did a couple of pages in here. One of the things that's in this version is very easy to do is you can move the order of the pages around. So I can move the narrow page below the third page. Um, one of the other things that I can do very easily is if I need to do a reference, uh, to this page, I can edit it very easily. And then I can add down here, if I want to say uh, sub pages, I might make that as a, um, as a heading. And then underneath that, I may add a child 
Um, I'm, I know the shortcuts. Um, another way of finding this is uh, you can go up to the plus. I can go down here to view more. I, this is then a list of all the macros. So this is um, basically widgets that you can add into a page. One of my favorite widgets is the children display. Um, this is my recommendation to add a children display um, to uh, any page that has subpages underneath it. I recommend that you have those in there all the time. The other advantage to the children display is that this is the where I mentioned before that you can have uh, uh, the metaphor with the file folder. So you can have a file um, a file cabinet with folders. I'm sorry, a file cabinet with drawers and folders and pages. So this then allows you to have to show a listing of all the sub pages. So if you didn't want to see it over here, you can embed a listing of all of the children, the child pages inside of this page um, here. And if I want to change the order of them, uh, let me do it this way, like that. I can do that. Now it didn't change here, but if I refresh that page, you'll see that narrow is now going to be on top. Oh, made a liar out of me. Uh, well, it doesn't look like it took. Anyway, uh, these will change as you edit them. They will all change. It does. It does work. These will line up. Um, so that's one of the things I recommend everybody do. So if you were trying to do document, um, if you're trying to do content management, one of the things you could do is set up a separate page, and then you could drop all the different content elements or sub pages inside of that. Um, and have a page be nothing but a listing of what are all the elements underneath this. Like a sitemap. Yep, like a sitemap, that's exactly it, yep. So Confluence does that pretty easy, and it, a lot of it is, is drag and drop, and it's pretty easy to edit these things. So uh, that's, that's one of the things that I, I really like, and I sort of uh, um, encourage people to sort of go and look at. All right, so we talked about this, uh, this checkbox here before. Um, one of the neat things that you'll see uh, as a part of this checkbox is um, I, uh, oh, you know, what? I was going to show you one other thing. Um, there's three different elements to one of these to-do list checkboxes. Um, one is just the name of the thing that you want to do. And you can change the order. You, I can put my name at the front of it. Um, I can say, I want to assign this to me. I'm the only person in this group, so that's why it keeps only coming up as me. Um, uh, more stuff. Um, and then if I want to add a, if I want to make this um, a do on a specific date, then I can simply add the date to it. So if you put in two slashes, it'll add you, it'll take you to the date finder. And then I can say, all right, that's due on Saturday. So cool, I can do that. And then if I publish that dude out there, these guys are still a list. Uh, now I can check off things on my list without having to go into edit. So that's kind of cool. I can check and uncheck. Um, but if you go up here to my name and go down to tasks, you will see that I have had things assigned to me. So here is the intro page of goodness. Um, sample page one. Uh, you know what? Those are assigned to. Yep, I think that's me. Stuff to do. That was my stuff to do that I just assigned to myself. So this is one of the examples that I can find things that are assigned to me, that are created by me, if I wanna get rid of the things that I've, I've already checked. So I can so, so I can show stuff that's being completed or is uh, not complete so far. So this is kind of a cool page that you can go to. Again, you can find this associated with me or I can build a page that drops in a list of to-do things. So this is kind of one of the cool things that, um, at, uh, that Confluence does just out of the box. So, All right, um, so, I tried yeah. to, oh, sorry, quick question. I tried to get my husband to answer this on uh, offline, but I think he's handling multiple things. But um, no worries. Uh, how do you, of course, you want a single source of truth. Um, how do you decide which tasks go into JIRA and which ones go into Confluence? Excellent question. Uh, here's my very short answer is I only use the, the to-do list inside of Confluence for taking meeting notes. I do not like to have this for long-term to-do lists. A best practice at the end of taking the meeting notes would be to identify the, uh, oh, let me go to the page, 
identify the stuff that you wanted to do in that meeting. Um, you can mark it as stuff to do and you can track it a little bit here, but a better way of tracking it is then to convert this into a, a JIRA task, okay? And you can, uh, we haven't talked about it, uh, but we get to that here. We'll start talking about some of the integration here is I can then make a reference. I can convert this into a linkage to JIRA. So if I want to create a new issue inside of JIRA, I can simply pick the project, make it a task, call it, and then it will create that JIRA ticket. And so now I, it was a to-do checkbox, but now it is a reference to a JIRA ticket. So that is our first integration, is we can see stuff from JIRA and Confluence all combined together. Very cool. All right, so uh, that was our, let me jump back real quick to this. So let's go over some of the things. We created a page, we organized the pages. Uh, oh, I need to show you some version control. I'll do that in a second. We talked about special characters. We talked about, um, uh, so reoccurring meeting notes. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, templates, we talked about that there are page templates. Um, we, we navigated around the space pretty well. We talked about to-do lists and then all in the nine box. So let's go back and I will, let's go through a couple of those things. So first thing I wanna talk about is version control. I've done a couple edits to this. If I wanna go back and see what kind of changes have been made here. The ellipse button up here is one of the easiest things that you can go to. Go to page history, and then this will tell me, and it keeps track of it. You can't get away from, uh, you can't hide your changes. So you need to be logged in as a person. It won't let you do make changes unless you're in there as a specific person. And it keeps track of all the things that you wanna do. If you've decided that you don't like the latest changes I want to do and you want to go back to that version, um, I can basically restore the version, the previous version of a page. If I'm not sure what has changed between this version and that version, I can do a comparison and Confluence already out of the box will say, this is the key. So green things is new stuff. Pink stuff is stuff that I took out and if it, it turns blue if I change the formatting. So you can see I changed the formatting of that box and I added this new row. Um, you can also, uh, uh, this is the status indicator in this view that was added. So that's one of the cool things that you can do is the version control inside of Confluence is very strong. Um, and basically you can't, you, you, it's hard to hide stuff from people. Is so, that a legacy thing or is that based on the web? Nope. On, on the uh, cloud. Yeah, version control's been out there a long time. Um, there, it, it wasn't quite as robust as it is now, but you definitely can go back and see other stuff that, that's been out there. You can do comparisons. The comparisons have been out there for years, so you should be able to do a comparison between pages. And let's be clear, it's um, comparisons of changes inside of a given page. It, that that um, version control does not let you do comparisons between pages. That's a whole different thing. Okay, so that was version control. Uh, one of the other things that we talked a little bit about uh, templates, uh, navigating around, the oh, reoccurring uh, notes. So one of the things I really love to do, so let's say inside of my third page here, that I wanted to make this a repository for all of my notes. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the third page and the only thing I'm gonna add in here is I'm gonna add the, uh, the child, the children display, and that's it. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just gonna say, okay, I want that to have a children display. Um, but inside of third page, if I wanna take notes, so the easiest thing to do is I would create a new page and I would simply do, um, uh, I think there's a business notes. I don't wanna use uh, file list, how to articles. Probably should have found this before, I apologize. Um, Meeting you can always there use the filter. Is. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there it is. So um, this is just a little pretty thing that I can make not come up anymore. Uh, and then this will create the new page. So as you'll see, um, one of the things that it did here is it defaulted several things. It gave me a header. So this is set up in heading two. It gave me subsets. So here's a page. Uh, uh, here's a, a date picker. So I can pick the date. 
It gave me bullets instead of uh, uh, check boxes. It said, hey, you should track your participants, your goals, and any topics that you cover. If there are action items, it defaulted to put me in some lists. So it gives me that recommendation. Um, it only, it, it, as, as soon as you start to type, all those gray letters will go away. And it also allows me to type in a decision and reminds me that you can track decisions with the slash decision in here. So that's a cool thing that you can do meeting notes. Um, I will show you, uh, so we can publish that. One of the other really cool things that I'll show you you can do is, let's say that I have a standing set template that I wanna use every day. One of my best practices that I'll do is I will create a blank page um, and I will set it up in the format that I like of my meeting uh, notes. So if at the top, I want to always have a name then I would say uh, I would uh, what my what I like to set up uh, my reoccurring pages is I'll put in an, uh, I'll call the name of it M M E Y Y uh, status report. So if I want to always have the same status report and let's say I want to always consistently have one that has, you know, uh, well, and then I put some bullets. Oh, I put some bullets stuff. Or if I just want to put a couple of bullets. And then, um, what are we planning to do? And I want to put some more bullets uh, of things in there. Okay. So I can do that and I can set that up. And then one of the neat tricks that I like to do is you can use the copy feature. So I set up the page underneath third page here. If I wanna move this dude up here, I'll drop it there. And then I'll go over here and I'll say, I wanna copy this page. So when I copy this page every day, if I wanted to do a different status report, it would make a copy where I, it, I just take out the words copy of, and then, all right, if it's gonna work for me, hold on. I'm in fat fingers. All right, and then I would change it to today, today's date. And I would set up my status report. I'd add all my stuff down here and I'd hit publish. So that's a, a, a best practice that I like to use is I will set up a standing template of reports that I do on a regular basis. So dailies, weeklies, monthlies. And then if I want to make a copy of them, I simply go down in here and make a change. I'll, that This is the standard one I would use. And then I would create the new page. Or I can use one of these templates that has already been made out there. So that's one of the things that I like to do is either use one of the templates and always, if you're, if you're going to use the standard template things, or if you want to have um, a set of things that you would always put into the same report every day, you can do that and then use the copy feature. Okay, uh, there's also a move feature. Um, if you wanna be able to move this, so if I wanna move this underneath meeting notes, so let's say uh, I took these notes and I didn't want them here, I could go down here and move them. And I wanna move them under a different parent, I wanna call it meeting notes. And sure enough, it finds the right meeting notes and I says, okay, I wanna move it there. And then we've moved it there. All right, so we've done a couple of things here. We, uh, we then did the meet. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the nine box. So has anybody seen this before, the nine box? Anybody know why we call it the nine box? No. It's got nine, bo nine dots in it. The nine box is a easy way to toggle between your different, com uh, your different Atlassian tools. So if you have multiple tools set up, so you can see Ops Genie is one reference here. Jira Service Desk is a different instance of Jira. Um, I've got it set up for Jira and Confluence, but you can add other things. All your list of Atlassian tools will show up under the nine box. That's also a very easy way for you to toggle between Confluence and Jira. So uh, if I go to here, I can simply toggle that page into, now I'm in my Jira instance. If I want to go look in my Jira thing, I can. Um, I created that uh, stuff to do to do. So if I go down and look in that stuff to do, 
Uh, actually, here, let's open that in a new page. And, oh, hold on. I got stuck in the, uh, uh, there it is. Go into the stuff to do page. And sure enough, so I'm in Jira. I got to Jira by using the nine box to toggle back and forth. And I can see that Jira here is referenced back to that Confluence page. So this is one of the other really, uh, really cool strengths is the integration and the referencing of Jira to Confluence pages and vice versa. So you saw on the Confluence page, the reference to this specific ticket. But one of the things that it does is it'll also give you a live link. So let's say on this specific ticket that I want to say, all right, it's now in progress. Okay, cool. Um, if I want to go back to that page, I can simply go back to that linked page. Here's that page. Here's that reference. Oh, let it finish loading. And here's where it now knows that that reference to that Jira ticket is now in progress. So that's one of the cool things that you can do here is you can use Confluence to show you the current status of your Jira tickets. So in your documentation that you're putting together, you can reference specific elements. There's many, many more things that you can do to reference Jira um, in there. So don't think that it's just one to one. Nope, you can put, you can have um, summaries, you can do counts of how many Jira tickets start with, have the word stuff in them, or how many are in progress. You know, how many have we created in the last day? I can create all of those queries. I can write it, I can create a query inside of Jira, and then I can embed that information inside of a Confluence page. All right, so we've covered a lot of these elements. Let's see if I've covered uh, the things on this page. Uh, all right, I think we've hit on all these things. Anybody have questions on space organization? I know we're running out of time. I was gonna hit on a couple other things. We talked a little bit about content. So you saw me add text, you saw me add an image. You can also add files. So if it's just a regular uh, .text file or whatever it is, you can add in anything you want. Michael showed us a little bit about some linkages. You can also easily link between content pages or you can link out to Jira tickets. So we talked about all those things. One of the suggestions I use is when you're inside of Jira, I recommend that you use a query and you write the query inside of Jira, keep that query in a separate page and then go back to Confluence and use the query that you just created of the stuff that you're trying to find. That's one of the best ways of, uh, you, of, of tracking uh, Jira, uh, Confluence elements into Jira. Another thing you can see that I, we just showed was the dynamic Jira updates. So every time that uh, you make a change inside of Jira, the most current version, when you refresh that Confluence page, will show the most current version of those Jira tickets. Talked a little bit about macros. Um, I haven't shown you the two axis grid, but I will in a second. Um, there, we, I, I talked a little bit about the status macro. That's that, uh, uh, the, the colored uh, uh, indicator. Well, I'll, let's go back. Let's, uh, I'll show you some more macros. So let's talk about a little more content inside of here. Um, Jira calls those macros. In the old days, they called them widgets, but I think they've moved to a, a more friendly name of macros. You can reach the list of macros. Either this, These are the ones that they default you to. So um, uh, these are all pretty straightforward. One of the cool ones, one of my favorite new ones is this thing called, uh, sorry, not that one. That's the, that's the Jira roadmap. If you wanna uh, create a Jira roadmap, you can go to that one. There's another one called a roadmap and I'll show you that in a second. It's really cool. If you've got a Trello board, so um, Tanya, you mentioned Trello boards. This is a very easy way mm -hmm. for you to link back to those Trello boards. Um, you can also edit the way that they are displayed in here to a certain extent. We mentioned the dates before with the double slash. If you've got a bunch of developers on your team, they can also drop in code snippets. It kind of formats them differently. Um, and in some cases, it's smart enough to know that it's a code snippet. Um, so that's some of the different elements you can have. As I mentioned before, there's a whole bunch of other things out here that you can add. One of the things that I typically like to show is something called a two-level grid. So I'll go in here, a two-dimensional grid. So if we add this grid in here, um, it allows me to set up an X axis and a Y axis of, of elements of Jira answers that, that are out there. So if I wanna show a list of all of my tickets by status, by sprint, that's a, one of the, the typical ones, I can uh, show them by sprint, 
and then maybe by who created them or uh, status. This, that's one of the things that I'll, I'll frequently do. You can, you can see that. You can sort them in natural order or by the totals. So in other words, if you have a, a, a whole bunch of things up uh, shown, uh, you can also limit the number of results. Typically, I'll go with as many as possible. Um, and you can insert this thing. Uh, so that will then insert it. I didn't add a query, so you wouldn't, uh, we're running out of time, so I'm going to try and make it short. But net, 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 if you're trying to show a bunch of, ex, uh, of uh, complex Jira relationships of things, also if you've set up some dashboards, some Jira um, uh, dashboards, you can show very um, uh, corresponding things inside of Confluence here. Uh, let's talk about another thing that we'll add. Uh, let's add an expander. This is one of my favorite things to add. Um, so you can go down to here and you can go down to, ex to expand. Um, expanders are just that. They're little things that pop out. So if I wanted to do a legend, um, so that's one of my favorite things is to set up a legend. Um, and I could set up, let's say I want to do I want to set up um, my, what are the different valid statuses? So um, pending is my gray. And then if I want to do another one, I would do status. And I would say in progress is in green. And then let's say like a good project manager, I would say um, status is complete and we'll make it blue. So those are the ones that I typically, that I want to tell my users if I want to put something at the end, like, uh, is the, so if I want to add more things to my legend, I can do that. Um, and then those are all out there. And then when I publish that page, it'll go through and it'll show me that expander. There's my legend. And if I want to see the stuff that's inside of that. So, it gives me a little bit, that's one of the ones that I'll typically um, use that uh, I, I recommend folks. If you've got, if you're going to put in things like status bars, if you want to document, what does that mean? But you don't want it to take up a lot of real estate on your page. You can do that. You can use uh, these expanders for lots of other things. If, uh, if you have notes, but you don't want them to always be shown on the page, that's uh, another uh, case that I'll use the expander. All right. Uh, well, last thing I was going to show you was this really cool thing called a roadmap. Um, you guys may not have access to this, so um, I don't want to burst your bubble and say, oh, you're showing me cool stuff that I don't get. Maybe this is a good example uh, or a good reason for you to go out and get this. Um, this roadmap planner is a new thing that they've added. Um, this is a very easy way for you to set up and create a Gantt. Uh, a, uh, a, a, a Gantt bar. So if you want to add other bars, you can add other bars. If you want to change around uh, the, the way the, the bar itself is, um, it has a name in it. Uh, actually, wait, I got to do the name up here. And then um, uh, if you want to add another marker, you can set in other markers. Um, and if you want to add in more swim lanes, you can add in more swim lanes. You can also edit some of these guys. So if you don't want that swim lane to be that color, you can make it that color. There's not a lot of editing that you can do, but there's a little bit. If I also want to move some things around, um, and instead of a month view, if I want to go to a week view, it is smart enough to know what it's talking about there. And then if I want to drop this dude in, that's one of the easy ways for me to add pretty good, um, high quality content to this, especially if you're in project management. This is a pretty uh, useful thing for you to do. And then if I need to scroll inside of this thing, you can scroll inside of this thing. All right, so those are some content elements. I'm moving kind of fast. Oh, I didn't cover tables. Um, let's do, the, let's do uh, tables real quick. Um, so we'll go back into edit mode. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, we are a, uh, a little bit Long past time. time. Yeah, uh, no we're worries. actually past time, and don't worry. Um, I just wanted to check in with the group uh, to see. I'm more than happy to keep you going. I uh, just wanted to check in um, to see if um, uh, folks are still uh, with us. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, just giving us uh, uh, a heads up whether you're, uh, this is making sense. Um, and I'll let, uh, let Ryan finish uh, if, uh, 
uh, pick one. Is there anybody still out there? Yeah, yeah I'm still here. Still here. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. Why don't you go ahead and uh, close up? Uh, we still need to do a quick screenshot. So yeah, fine. I'll okay. wrap it up. Yep. All right. So I mentioned uh, tables out here. Tables are all done a little differently. This is the latest way that you can do tables. Um, so the insert is here. Um, if you guys have the old version of tables, there's a new, it'll add another sub uh, bar up here with how to add, insert, and delete rows and columns. So that's uh, that's tables. There's a lot more that you can do with tables. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff you can't do with tables. So it doesn't do summaries very good. Um, it doesn't do math inside of them. I, that's one of the things they've been talking about adding for a while. In fact, they may have added, I haven't seen it lately. Um, one of the neat things that tables do is, is if you identify it as a header, it will allow you to sort within that. Um, uh, but it, it just does the most basic. It'll let you do it, you know, A to Z or Z to A type thing. It won't hey, let Brian? you do a lot of complex. Yeah. Um, quick question. In regards to the tables, have you been able to get those sticky table headings to work for you? Sure. So I'll give you an example of that real quick. Um, so in this version, and I will caveat it, your version may be different. In this version, the enabling the sticky, you can only make the top sticky um, and you can make the left column sticky. So if I undo that, then that makes the top not sticky any longer. Um, that's the only thing they, this version of tables, they've dumbed it down to a certain extent. So it's not as, uh, as flexible as the old version of tables used to be. Um, but, uh, you can do, you can make both headers and columns and, um, you can add the number. It automatically will number things over here. Other than that, there's not a ton of, um, things you can do. I will tell you the best practice that I frequently like to use is I will, um, I will uh, color code things. I will use uh, the tables. You can um, set the background colors to all the cells. And I will typically use gray or something like that to denote a, a, a thing, um, a divider. Um, but at, as of right now, there's not, the latest version of tables does not have an easy sticky element to it. They've sort of removed a lot of that functionality. Does that answer your question? It, it, it does to an extent. I just, uh, you know, I've tried a couple of times and make sure that my headers are set and then I, you know, save everything. And once it's saved, you know, the hope is because it's in its own section that the headers will just freeze right there while I'm scrolling and it doesn't for me. It doesn't. Nope. It is a poor, it is not a very good Excel. Yeah. I will tell you that right off the bat. So um, typically if you've got to put a lot of stuff in there, if it's a very complex set of tables, um, it, it also, um, they've gotten a little bit better, but in the old days, um, tables, you could also break them pretty easy. You, yeah. would, you could start adding content to them and then they just di didn't show the right elements. Or uh, a lot of times, like one of these cells would just disappear. So tables used to break all the time. That's one of the reasons they simplified it. Yeah. Um, the other, my other best practice is you can insert an Excel spreadsheet into here. That sometimes is a better mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah, that's what we started doing at my company. We started just attaching spreadsheets in there and just uh, updating the spreadsheet. And so, un if if the circumstance was where we were going to have a ton of information in the spreadsheet, if it wasn't, then we would just use the tables within Confluence. You've got it. That's that's pretty much the best practice. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So we talked about tables. Anybody have other questions? All right. So we talked about collaboration a little bit. I mentioned um, how to link page content out. We talked a little bit about that. Um, comments, there are two different types of comments that I'll go through real, real quick. So the first is, if, uh, if I don't like, some, or if I want to do co a comment about this, if I go in here and just highlight the stuff on here, you'll see that it does, it adds a little element here where I can add a comment and I can say, I really like this. And I can save that as a comment. And then if I get rid of that, that's fine, but I, it, it still stays highlighted. And if I click on that, it'll pop back out there. That's called an inline comment. Um, I can also, I can go down here and make comments about the whole thing. So I don't like this page. One of the things I can do inside of the comments that I, I frequently will take advantage of is I can tag somebody. 
So I can, if I tag somebody, then um, if the way, and each person can set this up, but uh, if you tag people either in Jira or in Confluence, they will get an email typically in most setting, uh, most of the way it's set up that way. They'll then get an email that they've been tagged. You can also find things that's been tagged to you inside of, uh, uh, if you look up uh, your name, you can find uh, references to yourself and things. So those are the two different types of comments. You can get page comments, or you can get up here were inline comments. And all of them are editable. Um, you know, if you've decided that, uh, if you've embarrassed yourself and you don't wanna put that in there, you can get that up there. You can also check resolve, which will make the highlighty part of it go away. And so if I get rid of it, it's not there anymore. So those are the uh, typical ways that you can, those are the two different types of, of inline comments that you can do. Uh, again, it's pretty useful if you're trying to do documentation of things. This is, that's a very useful um, feature. Uh, multi-user. So one of the advantages to Confluence is it is a true multi-user tool. We've talked before about it actually tracking the, uh, the version control on things, and it's my version control versus somebody else. One of the other things that's really cool is if I am in edit mode and someone else is in edit mode, we both can see what each other are editing at the same time. It, Confluence will also give you a note that says, hey, somebody else is editing this page at the same time you are. So um, that's where Confluence actually does a really good job of keeping track of multi-user, multi-people editing all the same page at the same time. So I recommend you guys, uh, if you're worried about that, go in there and play with it with a couple of people. Um, but that is a really cool thing that it does is uh, you can have multiple people looking at the same thing at the same time. Um, all right, so that was that. Uh, that was multi-user. So the watch and the like button. So at the top, you'll see that there is a, a star and you'll see a little eyeball. The eyeball is if you wanna be watching a page. So I can watch just the page or I can watch anytime somebody makes changes to the content in this page. I can also edit and say, I wanna allow people to edit this page or watch this page or not. And I can remove them as a watcher. Watching it basically gives you more um, notifications of if something has changed. So if somebody else were to go into here and add something inside of this, um, I would then get an email, a regular notice that, hey, somebody changed your page. Um, so that's a, sometimes a useful feature. One of the other elements that you can do here is if I wanted to tag a specific page, let's say I wanted to tag this set of notes, um, I, can, uh, I can star it. And then if ever I wanna go back and find my starred page, pages, I would go up here to recent. Uh, it, again, it depends on your version of Confluence. Sometimes the recents are over here on the left. So you, you know, go and hunt around and find it. But this is where I can see where, what are my starred pages. If I wanna just find starred pages, they also have a column for just finding starred pages. So if I have frequently used pages that I go to all the time, but I don't wanna put in a, a, a bookmark, a, a browser bookmark for it, then I can use the starred feature. Again, there's lots of searching um, for all of these elements. Also, if I created a page and I can't find it, so if I created this summary page and I can't remember where it was and it got lost, I drafted it, but it got, it, it, I closed my browser or I had a power outage or something bad happened and I lost it. This is an easy way for you to go find draft pages. Confluence does a good job. It's all being edited in the cloud. So it does a pretty good job of not letting you lose things. Um, not saying it's impossible to lose things, but it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's enabled me to go find stuff that I thought I lost uh, in, in uh, many cases. All right, so those were a couple of things. There's lots more that you, we can do around edit, uh, around labels and finding things and referencing. Um, one page can reference another page that, has, that is tied to labels. That's pretty cool to do. So there's many, many other things you can do. Um, you can also, you know, there is the overview page that tells you a little bit about stuff going on. You can go back to the home page. The default home page tells me all the stuff that I've been changing lately. It also tells me the, uh, the my most recent pages that I've touched over here. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can move pages between spaces. Um, the key thing is you can only move pages between spaces within one specific um, uh, instance. So if you are on a server, you can't move spaces. I can't move pages from here to your server. It doesn't work that way. Um, they all have to be in a one referenceable um, instance of Confluence. All right, so that was that. Let's go see. So we talked about the watch. We talked about the like button. That's pretty much it. 
Um, I know we're way long, so I apologize. The three last uh, best practices I was going to pass on is one, Confluence is always changing. Um, you should have a plan to change with it. If your Confluence administrator is not doing regular updates and you have a server version, you should ask them, why aren't we? Because it does fix, they fix bugs all the time. They add many new features. And a lot of times um, they do it for a uh, uh, very low cost. So, or, or none, if, you, uh, if you've already bought sort of the instance of it. So I recommend that you try and maintain your Confluence as often as possible. Uh, create a community of practice. So get the people that are on this call together and have them share uh, tips and tricks. Have them share their best practices or what is your favorite page or if you've created a new page. Um, that's one of my recommendations. One of the things you can also do is you can go and look at what someone else has been doing inside Confluence. If you know somebody that is really cool and good at Confluence, sometimes I've been known to go out and steal their stuff. Um, not their actual stuff, but their, their, uh, if they've added things into a page or they have a really good layout for pages, I'm all about sharing and reusing elements. The last thing is um, uh, have a place to go um, to, to get the latest changes. So um, have a, either a Confluence space or a page where you can go and you can share some of those uh, tips and tricks and latest changes that have been going on. All right, so those are some of my going beyond tips. Anybody else have any other questions? All right, so that's me. I mentioned before I'm a program director. I do a lot of e-commerce stuff. I work for a firm called Smith. Uh, none of them are based here in Virginia, so you've probably never heard of them. We specialize in Commerce Cloud. Um, I've been doing this, I've been in Confluence for a long time. Um, I've been doing IT a little bit longer than that. Um, uh, but if you guys have got any questions, feel free to hit me up anytime. Oh, sorry. Let me go back to that. Anytime. I am simply ryan.sly at gmail.com. And I'm always happy to answer questions. As my, my uh, parents will tell you, I'm also the IT support guy. So um, I'm very used to people just hitting me up and, with questions um, anytime uh, somebody runs into stuff. I like talking about Confluence and Jira. Um, and so if you've got something that you're stumped on or you're not sure what's the best way to answer it, feel free to hit me up. I, uh, I love to do uh, little updates for folks. Um, it also gives me an idea of sort of what people are trying to do out there. All right. With that being said, thanks very much. I apologize for running long. Um, I, I'll be honest. I didn't know it was only 30 minutes, so I probably had over-prepared for my stuff, but I ended up taking a 30-minute presentation and making it an hour and a half. <laughs> it's okay. I get the sense that a lot of people on this call certainly got a lot of value out of it. Um, let's go ahead and give a, a quick hand to Ryan uh, for all of his help. Um, now for the uh, fun part, uh, I need to take a quick screenshot of everyone on the line. If you are comfortable sharing your video, that would be great. It is not required, uh, but it would be great if you did. Uh, just as a quick, uh, uh, quick way to just say hi, let me get ready. I'll give you a couple seconds to get your screen and uh, your uh, whatever uh, prepared. And it uh, looks like uh, we have 10 people. I know we had 11 at some point, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot. All right. We were up 12 at one time. Yes. All right, I think I got it. Let me just double check and then save it and then, all right. All right, thank you guys for coming. Um, all right. I don't wanna take up too much time. Uh, I know that we have gone over. Thank you, thank you very much, Ryan, for your presentation, mm -hmm. it was quite helpful. Um, yeah. I am looking, like I said, in uh, August, uh, maybe continuing the conversation, maybe we'll do a presentation on uh, Confluence uh, permissions best practices. Uh, if that's something that would be helpful, please uh, do let me know. Uh, you can go back to the uh, comp the um, uh, ACE website where you signed up uh, for this event. And you'll also get a poll in the next day or two. I, it's not something I control. Uh, you'll get a feedback uh, link. Uh, you can drop your comments in there as well. Just realize that I don't get those comments until about a month later. So I won't get them until about July. Uh, but if you want to reach out to me, there are links on that page as well. Uh, i tell you what, let me, before I go, I'll share the, um, I'll share the URL for our community. Um, our community um, 
uh, where you can ask questions. Um, if you haven't uh, tried it out already, um, I highly recommend it um, to, uh, to visit, sign up. Uh, of course, completely optional, but it's a good way to keep in, in touch uh, with, uh, with the community here. Uh, so, um, so yeah, thank you guys for coming. Uh, again, uh, we'll try this again in August, and uh, I'll, put, I'll probably, probably put, out, put out a poll on the Confluence, or I'm sorry, the uh, community site to see if people are interested in trying to do this in person. If not, that's 100% okay. I'm fine with doing this virtual uh, as long as people uh, feel safe to do so. Um, but yeah. All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. You too, Thanks, Michael. Michael. Thank Thanks, you. Brian. Great job. You gave us a lot of good information. All right, you're welcome. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, you. I was like, where has this been my entire career? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I've never seen it before.